Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it's surgical and optimization, kindly tell me how many dural venous sinuses are there and how are they, how do they run? Uh, Ma'am, there are uh, four unpaired, the superior uh, and six paired sinuses. So the unpaired okay. sinuses are the superior sagittal sinus, the inferior sagittal sinus, the straight sinus are the unpaired sinuses and the occipital sinus. The paired sinuses are the spinoparietal, superior petrosal and inferior petrosal, the transverse and the sigmoid sinus. Okay, good. Can you also tell me how do they run each and every one of these? They are 10, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. So the superior sagittal sinus runs in the superior border of fax cerebri. Okay, looking the at the image over here, would you be able to tell me if it is one, two or eight you're talking about? In other words, uh, can you label the diagram, yes, please? Uh, yes, ma'am. So the superior sagittal sinus is uh, labeled as uh, number uh, number one. All right, continue, please. Yes, ma'am. So it is present in the superior border of fax cerebri. Uh, then the uh, straight sinus is present in the superior border of the tentorium cerebri. And the straight sinus here is uh, is the uh, line besides number two, which is not uh, labeled, ma'am. Okay. And then the there is the occipital sinus, which is present in the uh, occipital bone inner surface. Then uh, 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 there is the spinoparietal sinus uh, that is labeled on the uh, as number eight. Okay. On the lesser wing of spinoid, uh, inferior petrosal sinus is uh, number five and superior petrosal sinus is number six Okay. on the petrosal part of peripheral bone. And then the transfer sinus uh, is uh, present in the transfer uh, uh, occipital bone, inner aspect of occipital bone. In the and the sigmoid. The, yes. Yes, and uh, uh, then, then there is uh, number eight is the spinoparietal sinus, one. and then number seven is the cavernous sinus. Present. All right, into cavernous sinus. Okay, can you please tell me how this cavernous sinus is uh, formed? Uh, yes, sir. so the cavernous sinus is found uh, on uh, either side of the cella tarsica. Yes. It is uh, superiorly, it is bounded by the optic chiasma and the optic nerve and the internal carotid artery. Uh, then uh, inferiorly, there is the greater vein of spinoid. Medially, there is the pituitary gland. Uh, laterally, there is temporal bone. All right, good. And, and what are the yes. contents? Yes. So, so the lateral wall of the uh, so, uh, cavernous sinus contains the uh, no, three nerves, uh, four nerves, the oculomotor nerve, the uh, uh, tra tra trochlear nerve, the maxillary branch of the trigeminal nerve and the ophthalmic branch of trigeminal nerve. And the medial portion contains the medial portion contains the internal carotid artery, the plexus around it and the uh, abducens nerve. Very good. Okay, can you please tell me how would you know if there is a, a thrombosis of cavernous sinus? So the cavernous sinus thrombosis uh, presents with a painful uh, sw swollen eye. And, yes. Uh, there is a, a, a paralysis of the third, fourth, or fifth, or sixth cranial nerves, most commonly the sixth cranial nerve. Good. 
can you also tell me what causes the thrombosis of the coronary sinus? Yes, so uh, most commonly infections from the danger area of the face, uh, for example, pharyngeal from the nose, or infections from the ethmoid or uh, sphenoid sinus, air sinuses, uh, drain through the superficial ophthalmic or the facial veins yes. into the cavernous sinus, causing the thrombosis. So how would the patient present? Can you name few signs and symptoms? Yes, so the present could present uh, patient will present with the reduced visual acuity. Then there could be uh, paralysis of the ocular uh, ocular muscles. There could be papillary edema. Yes. And vision loss. So there will be painful swelling of the eyes first. Then, yes. Sir. Yes. Okay. Good. Can you please tell me how? Uh, can you please tell me how cerebrospinal fluid is formed? Uh, so, so, so the cere yes, the cerebrospinal fluid is formed in the choroid plexus, mainly in the uh, lateral ventricles uh, and the third ventricle. From the lateral ventricles, the cerebrospinal fluid go uh, travels to the third ventricle, uh, which uh, from the foramen of Monroe, and then from the third ventricle, it travels to the fourth ventricle through the aqueduct of Sylvius. From the fourth ventricle, uh, uh, it uh, drains through the foramen of Majindi and Lushka into the subarachnoid space where it is absor uh, absorbed. All right, good. Can you please tell me? Uh, right, you told me. Okay, if a patient presents with a, uh, like we just talked about, yes, uh, thrombosis of. Uh, Getting the word. Then, how would you write if there is a coronary sinus thrombosis? Then, uh, yeah. how would you uh, would you or would you not go for the uh, CSS? Uh, would you or would you not go for the lumbar puncture? A lumbar puncture. Uh... Yes, from lumbar puncture can be done, but if it is indicated, we can do a lumbar puncture. Uh, all right. Can you tell me what you understand by the Arnold Cherry malformation? Yes, ma'am. Arnold mm -hmm. Cherry malformation is the uh, downward uh, uh, descent uh, of the uh, tonsils of the brain, which uh, through the foramen of magnum. Okay. Causing what? Cerebral tonsil. Leading to what? Uh, I will come back to that later. No, can't okay. Uh, and how can you diagnose this condition? What is the best modality or imaging with which you can diagnose it? The MRI of the brain is done. Very good. Uh, okay. Yes, ma'am. More than 6 mm of lagging will order my forum and manual maintenance diagnostic. What is a tentorum cerebelli? Uh, it is a fibrous uh, sheath uh, present inside the brain. Uh, Attach which, uh, can you please tell me the attachment of it? Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. So uh, anteriorly, it is attached uh, to the frontal bone and posteriorly the occipital bone. No, superior bone. angle of the petrous temporal bone. And then what are the contents? What does it contain? Uh, it contains the straight sinus. No. All right. Can you also tell me, okay, in case of uh, coronary sinus thrombosis, uh, the nerves that you told me uh, will be affected. So how would you know? Yes, ma'am. So if the what are the yes? How would you confirm optic, the diagnosis? Yes. Yes, ma'am. If the optic nerve is affected, then the visual acuity will be affected. Affected. Okay. The, if the ocular motor nerve is affected, then the eye motion, uh, eye movements are affected. Uh, if the trochlear nerve and the abyssin uh, nerve are affected, then there could be lateral gaze or downward gaze. Okay, good. Thank you. This okay. weekend, this weekend. Wait. Okay. Okay. Can Wait. Uh, I've started and here is your question.
So if you have read and understood, considering the communication skills station, kindly begin. Hello, I'm Posia, one of the um, surgical doctors here. May I confirm your name and age? Uh, yes, doctor. I'm John and I'm 32 years old. Um, thanks for confirming and nice to meet you, John. Uh, could you please tell me um, about your knee? Well, uh, patient, uh, well, doctor, uh, yes, I had an uh, injury on my right knee and um, my surgery was planned today. Um, so are you here to tell me that it's my uh, turn now? Unfortunately, it's a bad news. Uh, we are really not able to do it today. What are you talking about, doctor? Uh, my surgery is already canceled twice. Uh, do you think it's normal for me? Um, I'm really sorry. Uh, I, I actually, we had an emergency uh, call to attend. It was really good to have your surgery today. We were in the OT and our, our consultant, Mr. Man, was called away to attend the emergency and we had to cancel your surgery. I'm, I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry for your inconvenience caused to you. So doctor, you think my pain is not, in, um, not an emergency for you? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. Uh, I, can, I can prescribe you some painkillers and uh, maybe I refer to your radio, uh, to a therapist. Doctor, I am doctor. I am not here to take medication. I am here for the surgery. Can you please call your consultant? Uh, I'm sorry, but uh, as I told you, he would be in the uh, theater and he would not be able to pick up the call. So, what are you doing here then? If you can't convey my message to your consultant. Uh, well, uh, after the surgeries are, I will make sure that I'll uh, I'll inform him uh, regarding you. I'll give him an update and get back to you uh, with whatever uh, we discuss about you. And I'll make sure that I discuss with him regarding your cancellation before and the inconvenience caused to you today and before. And I'll try my level best to get a date for your surgery as soon as possible. Uh, I don't want to hear anything. I just want to change my consultant so any other surgeon can do my operation. Well, uh, in my opinion, that would be time consuming too because the next consultant would have to go through your case from the beginning and it will take a lot. But at least I will know that the, the doctor will perform surgery on the day of the uh, and the, on the day of the surgery. But the, and this uh, consultant is only canceling my operation. I'm not happy at all. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I'm really sorry. But it's because of uh, emergencies uh, which came, uh, which popped up, and we had to address that. Otherwise, we are good to operate you today. Well, doctor, how will you say that the other operation is emergency and mine is not? Uh, I'm, I didn't mean that. I, the, the other uh, operation, which um, Mr. Mam was called away, uh, is basically a road traffic accident and it was to be prioritized. And uh, that's why we had to cancel the elective ones. Okay, so what can I do now? Will you give the second appointment uh, at the, uh, right now? No, I'm sorry. I cannot uh, give you a date here and now, but I'll get back to you later with an update once I'll get, uh, once I'll discuss with my consultant in the evening. Uh, could I check that I have your exact contact details? Uh, yes. Uh, your number is? Oh, oh, four, six, eight, nine. Well, thank you. I'll get back to you this evening uh, or later. Okay, doctor. Are you 100% sure that my next operation will not uh, postpone? Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I cannot guarantee you that because in cases when emergencies arise and uh, they need to be prioritized. 
Okay, but you can see my condition. It's very difficult uh, to walk. So how will I uh, continue my work? Because I took only three weeks off from my workplace. Now I have to get back to my work as well. Well, I'll, uh, I'll get a written document uh, signed by my consultant uh, stating that you will not be able to rejoin your duties because of cancellation of surgery and that you need you will be, uh, need additional sick leaves to your employer. Would that be okay? Yeah, it's fine. Mm. Okay, what else would you suggest? Uh, would Activities? You, uh, yes. Would you like uh, Would you like me to arrange a physiotherapy referral for you? They will show you some muscle strengthening exercises and some exercises to decrease your pain. Okay. Uh, what about uh, like movement? Because uh, with the exercise, they will tell you the movement. I and I can't uh, put weight on the on my right side. Uh, the physiotherapist that I will be referring to you uh, experienced in this field. And they will show you muscle strengthening exercises that will uh, such like as swimming, such as swimming, yes, which will increase the muscle strength without causing much wear and tear on your joint. Okay, that will be nice. Good. And uh, regarding your painkillers, uh, could you tell me what painkillers have you you taking and from how long? Yes, uh, at the moment, I'm just taking Panadol or that is like uh, three times or four times a day. It depends on the pain. Mm. But uh, it doesn't affect my pain that much. Uh, maybe I'll prescribe you some other uh, uh, painkillers and you should take them when you feel uh, that it's uh, the, the pain is really unbearable and it's uh, causing you a lot of discomfort. Uh, would that be fine? Yes. And uh, Mr. John, uh, let me, uh, is there anything else that uh, you want to ask me at uh, this point? No. No, no, don't say. Say you want to complain. Yeah, I will definitely uh, write a complaint ag uh, against your consultant. Uh, I'll, I'll hand over you the uh, leaflet and you can file your complaint. And uh, we will work within your rights and you can contact the PAL services. Okay. So let me summarize for you, Mr. John. I'm sorry for the inconvenience caused to you today. We had planned you for an orthoscopy today, but we were not able to do it because of an emergency which had to be attended. And I'll talk to my consultant and get back to you with an update. Meanwhile, I'll get a document for your employer uh, stating for additional sick leaves and I'll change uh, your medications and I'll uh, arrange a physiotherapy referral for you. Would that be okay? Uh, yes. Good. In case you have any queries, you can get back to the nurses here. I'll leave my number there. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Can you give feedback first? Yes. Uh, it was good. Um, yes. She responded all the questions. Yes. Um, and uh, um, a little bit, I uh, feel like um, she should be more empathetic towards patient. And um, otherwise, it's it was fine. Yes, she covered uh, almost. She covered all the points. Uh, yes. With practice, she will use uh, some other empathetic, uh, empathetic words as well, other than sorry. She was continuously saying sorry. So she was empathetic. I would not say she wasn't. She was. And uh, I was expecting she will uh, tell about the emergency case the consultant went for, just to give the difference between like uh, the, um, the patient case and the emergency which we uh, in which we, uh, you know, uh, cancel the operation, like to save the life or the, to save the uh, limb or something like that. Yes, but she did tell you about RPA. Yes. Yes, good. Thank you, both of you. Starting your timer and here is your question.
Right, so if you have read and understood, considering a clinical examination session currently begin. Okay, I will enter the room. I will uh, wash my hands, introduce myself, and then I will uh, ex uh, ask for the name and age, confirm the name, name and age, and I will afterwards uh, explain the procedure that I'm going to uh, ask, that I have been asked to ask, uh, examine your legs. So um, then I will ask for the consent and then I will carry on with the inspection. First, the general outlook and then with the hands. How much exposure would you give and how, what would be the position of the patient? Because you will be given the patient. So what instructions would you give to the patient? Uh, I will ask him to stand up and for the okay. exposure, I will ask uh, to keep their underwear on and the rest of the um, rest of the uh, body will be exposed. Okay. Would you be needing uh, Clepron? Uh, no, not exactly. Do okay. I? I'm asking no. you, I'll tell you afterwards. Yes. No, 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 I don't think so. Okay, okay then. Uh, and then uh, inspect the. Uh, then I'll start inspe uh, inspecting the patient while standing up. First, the general outlook. Then from the hands, and I will look for the uh, dar signs and uh, nails and uh, signs of uh, capillary radial pulses. And then I will move on. Radial with pulses the, for leg. Uh, for afterwards, uh, radial radial and then radio femoral delay. I don't know. Okay, continue. Okay. Afterwards, I will uh, start with, um, then I will move on to the uh, lower limb and I will examine the while uh, uh, on my, uh, while sitting down uh, upon the le uh, level of the legs for medial side, lateral side, uh, uh, anterior and posterior side, looks for varicosities and get, uh, get an area for the ulceration, uh, lipodermatosclerosis, venous eczema, hemosiderin uh, staining, atrophy blanche, edema, any scars of previous surgeries, and safina varics. Then I'll start with the palpation. I will feel the... How would you I'll... confirm safina varics? What would you do to make sure that you are checking for safina varics, even on inspection? You lost Even on, yes, yeah. I will ask uh, the patient to clear or keep the Put leg. Uh, till, uh, yeah, uh, at the medial side. I, I will look from the medial side uh, and ask the patient to keep the leg open so I can see from the medial side. And yes, the safina varix is from the four centimeter medial and uh, okay. get yes. to the pubic tubercle. Yes, continue. So, Yes. Then uh, I will feel for the sphena femoral junction. Okay. For sphena, its spelling is present. I will check for the palpable thrill, cough impulse, or uh, uh, otherwise. And I will also palpate through the course of uh, a greater and lesser, uh, short, oh, sorry, greater and short saphenous vein. Uh, uh, and then I will move on with the. Uh, I will uh, do the femoral pulses. You'll go uh, for palpation first, okay? And then okay. in palpation, you'll go for the varicose veins and then you look for the temperature first. Then temperature. tenderness, I will do, how would you confirm the, tenderness? Yes. Uh, while looking at the patient's face, uh, uh, while I'll palpate, I'll look at the patient's face for any discomfort and I'll ask if there is any discomfort, please do let me know. Yes. Then? And, um, and then I'll start uh, palpating the pulses, dorsalis pedis, posterior tibial, uh, dorsalis pedis at the lateral part uh, between the first, first and second pulse space. Uh, there's a posterior tibial behind the medial malleolus, then popliteal behind the in the popliteal fossa, a femoral in the uh, 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 mid inguinal point, and um, uh, I will also uh, then I will auscultate as well for the bruits, 
and for the special task i will uh, do the trenal and brack test in which i uh, ask the patient to uh, i will explain the patient that i'm going to uh, uh, raise your legs uh, for uh, and see the competencies of your uh, veins uh, in which i will raise the leg and make out the all the blood and then um sorry uh I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. You're mixing a lot of yes, things. Uh, so I'm letting oh, you try. Wait. So just try. Oh, yes. Um, yes. In the trundle and break, I will massage the, the blood out uh, while raising the leg. And then I'll put the uh, tourniquet and uh, uh, ask the patient to stand up. And if there is an um, uh, and see for the bulge or uh, perforation, and then after the uh, after uh, relieving the tourniquet, I will see the uh, uh, bulges if there is any refilling, uh, and if it cannot be controlled or can can be controlled, and then for this maneuver, which in which I will ask the patient uh, which uh, distinction between into integrate and retrograde law of the superficial varicosities. Uh, then in which I will apply the tourniquet uh, that uh, all the superficial veins are compressed and uh, ask the patient to be on the tiptoe or uh, to, to be on repeatedly on the tiptoe so all the uh, superficial uh, veins are drained. And then I release and see if there is a paradoxal condition okay and then uh, i will move for the handheld as a, a doppler assessment at the saphenophemoral femoral junction uh, to see the swoosh, swoosh uh, while uh, putting the do doppler i'll squeeze the calf muscles if there's a swoosh sound or uh, at the time of squeeze then it's uh, normal and if it's delayed a bit Yes, then it's incompetence. And, okay. uh, uh, and then I'll thank the patient. I'll ask uh, the patient if he needs any help uh, to covering up. And then how would you check Schwartz test? How is it done? So which Schwartz test? Which test, sir? Schwartz. Uh, Should I write? Oh. Um, I don't know. I don't know about that. Yes. Okay. Can you please summarize your uh, examination? Okay. Well, in my examinations, um, yes. uh, uh, this is a fifty-five-year-old gentleman came with uh, came to me with uh, a, a chronic uh, we, uh, very close pain. I've examined this patient, and in this patient, I found on uh, I found uh, on inspection, I found there are multiple blowouts and uh, uh, different perforators visible above and below knee. And afterwards, um, on the uh, afterwards on um, what were your examination findings like? What was on Prendelenburg? What was uh, on other tests that you did? Did you find anything positive? Uh, so, so, what are your main differential diagnosis that you are going to consider? My main differential diagnosis are the chronic uh, venous obstruct, uh, venous uh, in uh, compromise, uh, comprehends uh, like chronic varicose veins. Okay. And uh, um, uh, how yes, do you uh, intend to manage this patient? What other investigations would you ask for? I will ask for the venous duplets. Okay. Uh, uh, to determine the site of valvular incompetence. Okay. And patency of deep venous system. Patency. Okay. 
uh, what are the treatment options that you can offer to this patient? Uh, it depends upon the uh, effect effect of these in uh, quality of life. Like uh, while uh, it can be conservative uh, with uh, compression stockings, like elevation, exercise, and avoid prolonged standing and sitting. Invasive, uh, non-operative, like scleral therapy, radio frequency, photocoagulation, and invasive with uh, operative uh, under general anesthesia will be varicose vein surgery is reserved for symptomatic patients. So if it's symptomatic and uh, intervene the quality of life, so then uh, uh, operative varicose vein sur surgery is if recommended. A patient presents with you, uh, if a patient presents uh, with the secondary varicose veins, so what would you suggest to the patient? Secondary varicose vein, uh, I will uh, um, uh, suggest uh, the patient uh, to uh, lifestyle modification. I will suggest the patient uh, for uh, uh, lifestyle modification uh, and uh, leg, elev leg elevation and compression stockings. Okay, you will not operate on the patient, right? Or you will, or will you operate on the patient? With secondary varicose veins. Uh, I do. No. I will go no. back to this. Okay, start it. Where is your question? Right, so if you have read and understood considering it procedural skill station, kindly tell me how would you order these patients for OT listing? Okay, um, I will um, order uh, the OT list um, uh, after uh, discussing with my consultant and uh, I will place the, uh, the strangulated inguinal hernia at the first place with the okay. COPD and pan, uh, pacemaker. I will place it second and diverticular abscess of the uh, patient allergic to penicillin and iodine. And I will place the third, uh, the MRSA positive patient because, it, uh, uh, because it's infectious disease. All right, can you uh, give, the, give the motivation for your answer? Why would you keep the listing as it is? Uh, yes, uh, because uh, the patient in the first, it's of the emergency uh, situation, and we have to prioritize according to the urgency of the uh, case. And uh, secondly, the patient is uh, having a pacemaker and COPD. Uh, so uh, this kind of uh, uh, cases needs uh, a lot of attention uh, from the anesthetist as well as the surgeons as well. So it is better to perform in the early morning and the, the second case is uh, the uh, last one, like the MRSA is uh, is uh, uh, infectious disease. So there are the chances of the uh, passing infection from one patient to another. So we will keep the patient uh, at the last, um, yes. Okay. The second patient, uh, diverticular absence uh, of a patient with, which is allergic to penicillin and iodine. How would you take care of this patient? Uh, yes, um, I will. Uh, first of all, I uh, the, uh, it it will be marked in her um, file um, about the, her allergies. Secondly, I will inform the um, uh, uh, inform the anesthetist as well as uh, the uh, OT staff. 
regarding uh, the penicillin and iodine uh, uh, iodine allergies and we will replace the iodine with the chlorhexidine and uh, uh, the uh, penicillin will be replaced by cefazolin um, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, we will make sure that the patient uh, does not have any anaphylactic reaction during the surgery the first patient strangulated in vinyl hernia you wanted to place it first uh, what are the complications with COPD that you should watch out for? Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, the patient with our uh, with a COPD uh, have a high chances of the uh, uh, the uh, lung infection. Uh, it increases like three to five fold increases. So there are the chances the patient may suffer from the pneumonia. Uh, uh, what from, measures uh, would you take to ARDS. prevent this from happening? Yes. Uh, yes. Um, before the operation, we have to uh, ask the patient to stop smoking uh, three, uh, four to eight weeks before the operation, and uh, we will make uh, we will uh, give some uh, we will advise the patient to do deep uh, breathing exercises, uh, do a, um, incentive spirometry, uh, spirometry before and after the operation, and even after uh, and use an intermittent uh, positive pressure uh, respiration, and uh, post operative. We will uh, prop up. The, we will keep the patient prop up and attach the oxygen, and uh, we will uh, uh, we will make sure that the patient is able to cough, and, and we will uh, keep the patient pain free. And uh, advise early mobilization. Yes. Okay. Can you please tell me, according to the recent NICE guidelines, can you uh, please tell me what is uh, what are the what are the perioperative glycemic control for the diabetic patient? Yes. Uh, mm, uh... We will ask the uh, before the operation. We will ask the GP to control the uh, have a good glycemic control of this patient. And if the patient is uh, uh, if the patient is on uh, medication, we will ask the patient to skip only one meal before the surgery, and uh, also skip only one uh, one dose. And uh, we will keep the patient on first on the list. Uh, but you during... are placing this patient third on the list. Uh, but Why? here in this case, uh, the yes. patient is MRSA positive. Yes, but insulin dependent diabetic as well. Okay. Yes. So uh, cons yes. Tell me why, and uh, even if it's insulin dependent, then. Um, here in this case, and the patient is MRSA positive, so there and, are the chances yes. of the. Sorry. And, uh, and uh, it's diabetic foot, which is not going to get any worse. Yes, ma'am. Because it's already all right then. Yes, and we already planned for the amputation here. So um, uh, that's the reason we are placed the patient in the third. And uh, we will check the, uh, uh, the BSR level after every hour. And uh, we will keep eye uh, uh, on the, uh, the BS, if there is of the increase the glucose level, we, ha we will place, uh, we will start the uh, insulin in fear. We can start insulin in fear as well. During the operation, uh, we will give uh, half saline along with 5% dextrose and uh, 0 0.15 uh, or 0.3% of the- What should be the target blood glucose level before surgery of the third patient? It should be five, uh, five to ten milli millimol mm, per liter. Okay. Millimol per liter. Yes. What are the measures that you will take care of uh, preoperatively of the third patient? Ah, uh, yes, so the patient should. Yes. Sorry. Yes, third patient. Yes. Uh, uh yes, the uh, patient uh, should skip only one meal before the operation, okay. and. Uh, and, Maybe um, is sitting and waiting in the uh, in the uh, pre-ops uh, room for a longer time as you have placed him uh, or her on the third. So what would you do meanwhile? Patient uh, is by mouth. Yes, uh, we will uh, start the uh, uh, we will check the uh, glucose level. Yes, and yes. according to the glucose, we will give um, insulin on the sliding scale. And uh, meanwhile, we can also start the, uh, uh, the fluid, uh, uh, IV fluid if the patient is having any symptoms. How frequently would you be checking blood glucose level of these patients? After every one hour. Good. Okay.
what measures or what precautions would you take care of the first patient which is strangulated in violent hernia with COPD and pacemaker? Uh, yes, uh, uh, when we are uh, operating a, a many patients with a pacemaker, we have to check a few things like the, uh, uh, the, uh, about the pacemaker. Uh, there, uh, the patient should visit the, uh, her uh, pacemaker clinic in which they will tell uh, all the details about uh, the pacemaker as well as the dependency of the pacemaker as well. And secondly, if there is any advice to the surgeon as well as the, uh, the anesthetist, they will also provide that. There is one uh, the passport uh, which we called uh, for the pacemaker in which the type and uh, the um, uh, all the details of the pacemaker is also written so that should be also available during the uh, uh, before uh, during anesthetic anesthetic clearance what would you keep in your mind for this pacemaker patient during surgery uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, during the surgery, uh, we should uh, we, uh, we will uh, avoid uh, uh, di uh, uh, diathermy as much as possible. Uh, if uh, if required, then we use bipolar um, uh, uh, diathermy, and uh, uh, we will uh, keep eye on the ECG continuously. And um, uh, uh, there should be a uh, resuscitation um, uh, cardiopulmonary resuscitation is available at the uh, theater, and uh, uh, the uh, uh, the pacemaker uh, implant uh, temporary implant uh, all the equipments are also available in the um, on uh, on the ot uh, as well okay good thank you one last question maybe you can tell me uh, how would you take care of the warfarin of the patient Ah uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, for the warfarin, uh, we will see if uh, if uh, how much the patient is dependent on the warfarin. Like, is it because of the uh, the, the condition of the patient is because of the uh, this uh, um, any uh, cardiac event or it's because to, for the prevention. So if we will grade the patient like high risk and the low risk. If the patient has a high risk, uh, then we will uh, stop the warfarin uh, on five um, uh, four days before. And uh, as well as we will start the low molecular weight heparin, um, then uh, we will uh, stop the low uh, molecular weight heparin uh, 12 hours before the surgery. And after the eight hours, uh, six or eight hours, we will uh, again continue the uh, low molecular weight warfarin, uh, warfarin uh, heparin, sorry. And uh, we will continue the heparin uh, after uh, when the oral intake started. And uh, here we will ch uh, check the uh, patient PT and INR level. If uh, it is fall under uh, under uh, less than uh, one point four, then uh, we will uh, yes. yes. Good. And uh, yes, which patient out of these three uh, would be taking warfarin? Uh, and that uh, first patient, the pa with the pacemaker. Why not the patient with AF? Yes, ma'am. Uh, with the yes, ma'am. Uh, third as well. Third as well. Good, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Well, and here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering it's surgical and optimization, kindly mm -hmm. tell me which region <clears throat> are you looking at? Um, this is the um, pelvis, including the two hip bones, the sacrum, and I can see one of the um, femur bones. Femur bones as well, okay. And uh, this region in our 
language is called which region? Sorry? This region is called which region in our terminology? Gluteal. Yes. Can you identify the muscles of the gluteal region? Maybe uh, which muscle is this? Um, this is the gluteus medius. Yes, very good. Can you identify this muscle? Gluteus maximus. Can you tell me the origin and insertion of this gluteus maximus? It's so gluteus big, yes. Yeah, Health so gluteus. The, yes, please. The, the, yeah. Um, so it arises from the um, uh, posterior gluteal line um, on the outer surface of the ileum and it extends um, and is inserted into the gluteal tuberosity on the femur and also it uh, joins the um, iliotibial tract. Okay, what is the nerve supply of this muscle and what are the actions of this muscle? Uh, it is supplied by inferior gluteal nerve. Yes. And and its um, action is it's the extensor and external rotator of the hip. Okay, good. Uh, can you identify uh, if we come on the right hand side this muscle? Uh, gluteus minimus. Very good. And then there is which muscle is this one? Mm, piriformis. Very good. Okay, and then this one. Mm. Is it? Uh, I'm not. Gemella superior. Okay. And then uh, this one. Quadratus femoris. Obturator internus. Obturator internus, sorry. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, there is this little one, mm -hmm. externus. Obturator mm -hmm. femoris. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then this one. Mm, I can't. Quadratus femoris. Can you please tell me the origin and insertion of quadratus femoris muscle? Please. Mm -hmm. So it arises from the lateral part of the um, ischial fibrosity. Yes, and, and part of the it, upper lateral border of the upper part of the ischial upper part of the yes. ischial and, and it inserts into quadrate line on the femur. Quadrate tubercle of the femur, yes. What is the nerve supply of this muscle? Quadrate nerve to quadrate is femoris. Yes, very good. And the action? So um, these muscles, they are... Lateral rotator of the thigh. Yeah. Okay. okay right. Yeah. Can you also tell me, how would you sense, how would you test the sensation? of the leg, if you uh, ha have to test the lateral aspect of the foot, which dermatome would that be? How would you check it? L5. S1. S1. Okay, uh, right. If you have to check for L4, how, mm -hmm. where would you test it? It's the medial side of the leg. Medial medial leg. Yeah. Okay, uh, how would you check the deep peroneal nerve? The peroneal. It's a very mm. common and famous. <coughs> yeah. First web space. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. You mm. knew it. You forgot. Okay. Can we move on and tell me what are you looking at now? Um. This is the uh, popliteal fossa. All right. Can you? Would you be able to tell me the boundaries of the popliteal fossa? So. Um, supra, um, supra med, uh, supra medially we have semimembranosis, semitendinosis, supralaterally we have biceps femoris, and infra medially we have medial head of gastrocnemius, and laterally, so, uh, infra laterally we have lateral head of gastrocnemius and plantar. Okay, can you please tell me the contents of the popliteal fossa from outside to inside? Um, so we have the uh, two branches of the sciatic nerve, tibial nerve, and the common peroneal nerve. And then we have the uh, popliteal vein, and the deepest is the popliteal artery, along with the popliteal lymph nodes, subcutaneous fat. All right. Right. Okay. If we come back to the previous, if we go back to the previous diagram, if you're mm -hmm. looking at to the hip bone, one of them, can you mm -hmm. tell me uh, 
uh, what are the parts of the hip bone? If you can identify the ones you can see and tell me. Hip bone. So this is a, a one is the iliac crest. It is the superior um, edge, which I can yes, see. This one. Yes. yes. Okay. And yeah. then the, is the ischial fibrosity. Very good. Yes. And the superior and the um, superior pubic ramus. Okay. And then the pubic bone body and then the how acetabulum is formed can you please tell me it is formed by um three bones um it is formed by the ileum the ischium and the pubis okay uh this acetabulum uh, this uh sorry hip bone joins with the sacrum and then here are two gaps there are two there are spaces right uh, can you tell me the contents of the of these spaces? So the greater Upper, sciatic, for, yes. greater sciatic foramen and the lesser yes, sciatic foramen. Yes, um, all this, the, yes, the uh, sciatic foramen. Also, so if you can tell me the contents of both of these. So the greater sciatic foramen, foramen is divided by the piriformis muscle um, into two parts, upper and lower. From the upper part is the superior gluteal nerve and artery. And from the lower part, we have the inferior gluteal nerve, the an artery, uh, sciatic nerve, the um, um, nerve to quadratus femoris. Um, that's the only ones which I can remember, sorry. Okay, there are four structures which have the honor of uh, passing through both of, these both of these spaces. Can you name those? Oh, I don't remember, sorry. There is a abbreviation pin, if you can remember. What, what is, uh, <coughs> this is the abbreviation of what? A pin? Yes. I'm giving you a hint. Sorry, I don't, um, I don't think so. I've gone through this question before, sorry. Okay, never mind. Uh, right, can you please tell me how many compartments there are in the thigh? There are um, anterior, medial, and lateral compartments. Okay. And uh, what are the nerves of each compartment? So the anterior compartment is supplied by the femoral nerve. Um, the uh, lateral compartment is um, um, has the same nerve supply. And the medial compartment has the uh, nerve. I don't know. Sorry. Okay, uh, if we come back to this next picture, uh, if a patient presents with the swelling on the back of a patient's knee, right? So what are the differential diagnoses that you can think of? So starting from the skin, we ha can have lipoma sebaceous cyst. Then going um, deep, uh, deep, we can have uh, neuroma. We can have um, bigger cyst. We can have osteosarcoma from the bone. Um, we can have a pleated artery aneurysm. Good. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Starting your timer. Here is your question. Right, so if you have read and understood, considering your surgical pathology station, can you tell me what do you understand by the term sickle cell disease? 
Sickle cell disease is a hereditary hemoglobin pathy in which there is a point mutation on chromosome 11 at position 6, which causes the formation of uh, uh, hemoglobin S variant of hemoglobin, where there is the uh, replacement of the uh, glutamic acid with a valine residue, resulting in the formation of a sickle-shaped red blood cell. Uh, which gives, uh, which will result in hemolytic anemia, microvascular obstruction, and ischemic damage. All right, good. Uh, can you tell me what uh, causes or what are the risk factors which predispose to sickling of the red blood cells? Uh, sickling can be due to fever, some sort of infections, then. Uh, um, Yes. Then dehydration, uh, cold, the hypoxia. Dehydration. Yes. yes. Can you uh, tell me a few acute complications of uh, sickling? Uh, acute complications could be first of all, they could be uh, uh, they could be painful. Uh, uh, yes, painful crisis. crisis. Yes. Yes. Then Ed? there could be painful crisis. There could be increased susceptibility to infection with encapsulated organisms. Then uh, there could be acute chest syndrome. Uh, yes. Then due to ischemic changes, it, there could be stroke. There could be also uh, a severe bone pain resulting in foot, foot hand syndrome. Yes. All right. This patient uh, has presented uh, to A&E and patient was discovered to have sickle cell disease. Why is it important? Because the patient has also discovered a brain tumor or a mass in so, the brain. So why uh, knowing sickle cell disease is sig significant for you as a surgeon? Uh, it has some uh, surgical relevance to this. First of all, uh, sickling would make uh, sick, a person with a sickle cell disease would mean that for, uh, we have to take some precautions uh, per operatively, pre operative, per operative, and post operatively. First of all, we have to ensure that the hemoglobin level of the patient is, uh, if we plan to uh, uh, operate on the patient, then we will have to uh, correct her hemoglobin level and uh, we'll have to consider the blood transfusion. Okay. Then uh, during anesthesia, we must ensure that the patient is not dehydrated and um, and we are and hypoxic or hypercapnic. We have to also post-operatively the patient has more susceptible to develop DVT, so DVT profile issues should be given. Spiral, uh, then there is more chance of developing acute chest syndrome and chest infection, so spirometry exercises should be considered post-operatively. So that is what why. What is another most important advice or a precaution that one should take for a patient who is undergoing surgery? Uh, sickle cell disease patient undergoing surgery, use of tourniquets. So why? It should a be tourniquets, with, yeah. Tourniquets yeah. should not be, uh, should be used with caution because while well, the patient is pro-coagulant state. So, yes. All right, good. Uh, can you tell me how the manifestation of the brain tumor occurs? Uh, it depends on, on the site and stage of the disease. Okay. So uh, normally patient usually presents with features of intracranial space of foundation, such as uh, severe headache, which is more marked in the morning, nausea, vomiting, a blurring of vision, uh, then uh, neck, uh, neck, uh, neck pain, and also uh, the patient will have, uh, depending upon the location, if it is in the frontal lobe, then the patient has uh, changes in uh, behavior, disinhibition, and um, uh, memory, uh, memory uh, problems. If it is in the temporal lobe, then in the patient will, if it is in the temporal lobe, patient will have auditory uh, auditory defect a defection. If it is in the occipital lobe, then patient will have visual field defects, and also uh, generalized patient will have upper and motor uh, upper uh, sorry upper and lower limb uh, uh, focal neurologic okay. deficits. Considering this and patient, sometimes How would you manage this lady further? Uh, so CT scan uh, reveal that the patient has a brain tumor. So I'm going to have to stage the brain tumor. 
and then um, going to uh, have to uh, consult with a multidisciplinary. Uh, we have to take a multidisciplinary approach involving a neurosurgeon, an oncologist, and um, and uh, and a hematologist, of course, and uh, continue the next management. If uh, if it if the mass is resectable, then we will go for okay. uh, resection of the uh, tumor. You decided we'll with your uh, MDT team and you did the biopsy. The result came back and it shows uh, that brain biopsy, biopsy shows that it's squamous cell carcinoma with keratinization. How would you interpret that? Uh, so that would mean that there is, uh, it could be a metastatic tumor. Uh, possibly a squamous cell carcinoma from either the primary source would be at the head and neck uh, squamous cell carcinoma. It could be from the uh, uh, from the uh, lung. It could be from the skin. It could be from uh, her uh, from her cervix, cervical carcinoma. All right. How would this new carcinoma. finding? Uh, how would this new finding influence your management of this patient? Then we'll have to uh, we'll have to stage uh, since it has already gone to stage four. So then uh, we'll have no, to decide. No, how do you know uh, it's stage four? Okay, metastasis. Okay. Okay, metastasis. A patient has gone into brain metastasis. So then we'll have to uh, we'll have to give management accordingly. Most probably palliative, palliative care. Palliative. Yes. And also. All right. So yes. you're not uh, treating. You decided not to treat it. So it will result in. Uh, if 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 we don't treat this mass that it is going to so uh, ultimately it's going to increase in size it's going to increase the intracranial pressure and then there's going to be herniation there's going to be coning which would ultimately lead to death of the patient all right uh, this patient might causes. even present with bone pain how would you manage that because patient has sickle uh, cell disease as well and the mass yes. which is also uh, uh, bone pain. So in that case, I would have to go. Uh, pain would be according to. Uh, uh, I would manage the NLGC according to World Health Organization. What causes uh, this pain? NLGC Why the pain added. occurs? What's happening? That's uh, That is because of the sickling or oh, uh, effect yes. of the yes. cells, which causes blockade of the microvasculature, resulting in an ischemic. Uh, the ischemia and uh, thus the pain. Okay, just considering, uh, what are the most common primary tumors of the brain in elderly patients? So there, uh, there is high grade and low grade tumors. So okay. high grade is like glioma, glioblastoma, multiforme, and then uh, medulloblastoma. Then upper uh, low grade tumors are usually. The, uh, uh, these are, uh, this could be like epinema, astrocytoma, meningioma, neurofibroma. Then uh, according to the uh, origin, it could be primary uh, brain tumor and secondary brain tumor. So the secondary, Good. that is not static. Okay. Can sites. you please tell me patients with sickle cell disease are normally immunocompromised. Why is it important for you to keep in your mind? Uh, patients, uh, patients are uh, normally immunocompromised. Uh, that's because of, uh, because of their uh, no. There is autosplenectomy. Yes, that's very out. good. So, yes, this is what I wanted to hear. Yes, because of the infection, they are susceptible to infection. So, very yes. good. Because of the capsulated autosplenectomy yes. process. Yes, very good. This is what I wanted to hear. Good.